beavers don't always use uh, sticks. They build their dams with uh, rocks and mud as well. The vegetation is, is, is what they're eating, um, but they also incorporate it into their dams. <laughs> Just kind of looking at a classic beaver stick that's used for food where they've cleaned off the cambium and, and the bark and ate that. Um, and they'll cache this for winter. Um, but uh, yeah, it's what they do. So pretty neat looking. I'm sure there's more dams in this complex, um, but this was the easiest one for us to get to today. Well, my name is Winston Morton. I work for the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife. I'm the project lead for the Grand Ron and Umatilla Fish Habitat Program. And we're here today in an upper tributary of Joseph Creek, a tributary to the Grand Ron River. The tributary's name is Chesnimus Creek. And why we are here today is because we're looking at the impacts of riparian, or rather the area that's next to the stream side, restoration, the vegetative community to see, that's the riparian area. And we're here looking at the effects of riparian restoration associated with uh, salmonid, salmon, which are Chinook and steelhead uh, restoration efforts. In particular, we're looking at the growth or the recovery of vegetation, of willows, alders, and cottonwoods, and how that has allowed beaver to move back in because they now have a food source to sustain and be here over time. Behind us, we have an active beaver dam, um, one of many. Uh, Chestnimus Creek, for about 15 years now, has had um, beaver colonies within the riparian exclosures that were built in the late 80s and early 90s. Um, so this project shows that passive restoration or restoration that doesn't involve necessarily working in the channel. It's just simply fencing um, cattle out or other livestock out and then allowing the riparian area again or the, the vegetative community on the sides of the, the stream to regenerate. And they are regenerating from most, in most cases, multiple years, uh, many years of, of overgrazing. We are on private property. Uh, this is a private uh, landowner's decision to do this project. You know, they see many benefits as, as well. One of the things that you can see behind us is the water table has been elevated. Uh, beavers actually continue to promote more growth of vegetation as they elevate this water table. And these beaver complexes, again, can also promote more wetlands. Um, and ultimately for us, what they are providing related to our focal species, which are the Snake River Spring and Summer Chinook, and our Summer River, or excuse me, my Snake River Summer Steelhead, they are providing refuge for thermal refuge from higher temperatures. So in these backwaters we can find colder temperatures and the fish are able to make it through this low flow season, base flow season, um, continue their growth before they migrate all the way to the ocean. Um, I am going to guess approximately 500 miles away. I can't remember how far we are away. Uh, through eight dams. Um, this program, the project that I work for, is funded by Bonneville Power as mitigation for the operation of the lower four Snake River dams and then four dams on the Columbia River. But we wanted to come out and look at an older project that was more passive, that benefits beavers, and it benefits beavers because it helps regenerate the riparian vegetation that they rely upon. And so one of the mitigation efforts is to restore the spawning and rearing areas in that we produce more outmigrants naturally. And so even while those, those occurrences are happening as a result of the streams, uh, excuse me, dams downstream of here, if we can get the productive productivity of the, the natal areas, the spawning and rearing areas back up to potentially historical, um, you know, we hope to be able to sustain and or recover these heavily impacted fish. Um, particularly on this system, um, it's Snake River Steelhead. Um, we will go to a Chinook stream later today, um, but we are specifically targeting Steelhead and with the idea that if we increase rearing capacity here, we can get more fish to go to the ocean, which will potentially 
give us more adults coming back. So that, that's, that's the goal behind it. Um, the areas that we're in uh, have identified uh, what we call limiting factors, such as water temperature, um, lack of vegetation, um, some of these other components, um, lack of water um, that impact the survival or, and or production of our, our salmonids, our steelhead and our chinook and native trout. Um, but we are looking through our actions to address some of these limiting factors. Um, here it was, was this vegetation that you see. In particular, it had been overgrazed uh, to, uh, to the stream's edge in many locations. And through the simple action of fencing and land management, uh, we were able to grow this vegetation back. And subsequently, while not a target of the project, the beavers benefited from it. And I've been on this project now for 18 years, and I would think it was probably 15, 14 years ago where we consistently started seeing beaver dams. And while we, the system is flashy at times and produces big flows, the beavers actually, their dams have maintained and or um, they have rebuilt them. So the colonies have been sustained here.